Hello there, everyone. It's the middle of the week, and we're looking at the epistle lesson, which continues to be from the first letter of John. And remember, what we've seen so far from the first letter of John is it's almost like you're reading the gospel of John all over again, especially when it comes to that word love that just shows up time and time and time again. Now, our lesson that we'll be reading this week is from 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 21. And I just got done counting the word love, either in the verbal form or as a noun, shows up 27 times in these few verses. From uh, chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. 27 times. And that's not counting the fact that twice the author addresses his audience as beloved. So, I guess if you're sick of hearing the word love, 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 you might as well just plug your ears whenever you hear this in church on Sunday, okay? Because it is all about love. In fact, when you look at the entire letter of First John. This is the, I guess you could say the pinnacle. This is like the exclamation point on everything that he's been trying to say throughout. In fact, there's a lot of people who look at the letter of First John as being a sermon that was written to a rather large audience, not just to like the people in one particular church, but to, to many people who are part of this greater Johannine uh, community of believers. Apparently, uh, what we've seen happening here is already a rift that's happening amongst many of the Jesus followers. Uh, they're just getting to the point of be, being called Christians, but they are those who are, are following uh, the, the words and the life of Jesus, putting their faith, their hope, and trust in him, largely because of the work of the apostles who have gone out and, and shared the good news. But already there's tension that builds between different segments, and apparently there are some that have left this community of believers, and that's mentioned several times uh, throughout this letter. But what was really um, emphasized in the verses that we'll have this Sunday is the fact that it all centers in the fact that God is love. Now, it's not that love is God. No, God is love. A little bit of a difference here. And if you think about it, you, you kind of can come out and say, okay, I get it. I get it. God is is love and if we abide in him and he in us the love just flows see that that whole talk about abiding in god that's what our gospel lesson is going to be from the gospel of john i am the vine you are the branches you know gee it, it's like you're almost reading the same thing also as you're reading this portion of first john it's almost like you're reading John 3, 16 all over again. It's just amazing, the, the correlation between this and the gospel. So there are those who, who feel that it could be that this community of believers only had the gospel of John as their gospel. They may not have known of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or if they did, they may have thought of them as being inferior to what the Gospel of John has to offer. To me, I, I value all four Gospels for what they tell us about the life of Jesus and what he has called us to be and do as his people. But especially here, th 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 this is just wonderful stuff. And I read in one commentary that Look at different Bibles. And I didn't think about doing this, but look in different Bibles and you'll see that some of these verses, especially verses 7 through either 10 or 11, are kind of 
rewritten as, as being a poem. So it's, it's just right in the middle of his sermon, the author launches into a poem or perhaps even a song. It's hard to say, but the, the structure of it is very poetic. My uh, scripture that I was reading was from the Revised Standard Version, and it just has it as a straightforward paragraph form, but not necessarily so. We're just not 100% sure about that. But some of the things in there are are just fantastic. Um, beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Uh, going back to be beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Um, whoever doesn't love, um, does not love, does not know God, for God is love. Wow, it's just, there's so much stuff in here that, that is so powerful for us to know and to hang on to. And especially when it gets down to the end of what was said here, this is what he's already emphasized once before. Those who say, I love God, but then hate their brothers or sisters, they are liars. That's pretty harsh stuff to be saying that. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen with their own eyes, cannot love God who they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. It's all about love, loving one another. We can talk about how much we love God and how faithful we are and this, that, and the other. But if it doesn't show in our lives, that really reveals just where we're at in our walk of faith. The only good thing is this whole thing about God as love. Even then, in the midst of our failures and our not loving one another, guess who still loves us? God. That's the hope that we have. That maybe he can be the one that pulls us out of our funk, right? You just never, ever know. Well, God's blessings be with you. And go ahead and read this. First John, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 21. That's what we'll be watch, uh, looking at this coming Sunday. And it's not quite the finale, but it's the real crescendo, if you will, the real pinnacle of what John is trying to get across to you and to me, and especially to his community of believers. Blessings be with you.